What's up guys, Johnny Glock here. Uh, first and foremost, Happy New Year. Hope you guys had a Merry Christmas. Um, you know, it's been a while since I've put a video up. You know, the last video I had up, they took down because uh, of course I was um, going against community guidelines. So I was a little trepidatious about it. And we've just been so busy after the Black Friday sale and holidays and all that stuff. And I took a little bit of time off. Um, so that's the reason for the hiatus. I think I have so many videos where I talk about taking a hiatus, it's, it's unreal. But, you know, first things first, I do own a trigger company and then I can get to do these videos when I, when I do have a chance, so. Remember, if the videos get pulled off of YouTube, he's on Rumble. So follow him on Rumble. It's just, you know, Johnny Glocks. Yeah, yeah. So just look it up. Well, well the link's actually in the bio. So, um, but something came out today. Well, it didn't come out today, but I received it today. And uh, Wick is going to pan down. So, you know, I absolutely had to make a video. And I wanted to be the first one to, you know, break this. I don't know if I am, but... I'm pretty much probably the only one you could trust <laughs> to say what needs to be said about it. Um, so this is Glock's performance trigger. A lot of people don't even know that Glock was coming out with this. I thought it was going to be released at SHOT Show, so I wasn't even trying to get a hold of them. And then I had a rep of mine call me and say, hey, we have some of these. And I'm like, send me, overnight them to me because I wanted to get my hands on them. So basically, yeah, it is... Um, Let's take a look at it. Here's how, what it comes like in the box. You saw the box. It's got a rubber band there around the around where the, you know, kind of where I put my zip tie. The first thing you'll notice that this is not the standard Glock shoe. This is a sort of a flat, and I'm not going to say sort of, it is a flat face. No, well, it's not even a flat face. It's got a little hook right there. But what, what you no longer have with it, that everyone hates is the fact that there's no more protruding blade. And the blade on this is thick. So it does, it's not the thinned out safety, it's the thicker safety. And when you do depress it, it's, it's flat, it's very comfortable, I'll say that. Um, same, exact, you know, same exact safety length and all that kind of stuff, nothing too special about that. Um, as you can see, there's some major weirdness going on back here that I will explain. Um, it's, it's actually, you know, doing the same thing as the Timney. Um, and you can back up with this. I'll say this right out of the gate. I don't, I don't think that, I don't know when they started working on this, but I, but w judging from what I'm seeing here, if it wasn't for this, you know, Timney tech, I don't think this would exist, but that's, that's just my opinion. I don't know. I, 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 I just know that this, this piece of innovation probably just like anything else it makes people go oh i'm gonna try this i'm gonna do this just like i've built on this i've i've done shoes and i've you know created a bunch of different things and another thing i wanted to mention too like um i just got these in so those of you guys that have the vex um and, and you know the timney always has reset issues the vex helped clean that up the, the timney vex upgrade but even with that i wanted to have a spring that added a pound to the actual reset so basically, this is a pound heavier spring. It's a pound heavier than the red spring. So basically, it's only going to add about a quarter pound to the brake weight, um, which is kind of imperceivable with the finger. But the reset with this thing, with this thing in there, is unbelievable. I'm trying to figure out a way because I know a lot of you got this Vex shoe. I'm trying to figure out a way, like maybe if you send me in a self-addressed envelope or something like that that I can, uh, you know, with a couple bucks, I can send you this out. I don't want to have to, you know, put it on the site and, you know, charge five or $8 for shipping for, for a spring that's only, you know, five bucks. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure that out. But anyway, I want to make it, uh, I want to make it available and, you know, we'll, we'll see what's going to happen, but I'm going to have, this is going to be on the website, um, by the end of the week. I digressed. So anyway, um, let's, let's, look at the action of this so since they are calling it a performance trigger you know we want to we want to test its performance that's the first thing we want to do so um you know what i probably should have put a stock glock together to compare this against but we have so we have very i don't think we have many stock glocks in here do we no everything's custom around here wait a minute oh we got a stock lock it's in a 43x but it's still going to give you the same still going to give you the same sort of uh you know, same sort of thing. So here's your Glock pre-travel right there. Oh, blew through that. Here's your Glock pre-travel in a standard, you know, not performance. Here is your Glock pre-travel in the performance. 
So it is just about the same as far as that's concerned. See, I'm blown. This must have a this must have a 3.5 connector in it, one of those ghost connectors, because I blew right through that wall. That's why I don't like it. So basically, this is your pre-travel right there. And I'm gonna switch this over because it's gonna be easier. No barrel swiping for you to. I want that square. So basically right there, that's your pre-travel. Just about the same as the stock trigger shoe. Now when it comes to the brake, there's your brake. But now just like the Timney trigger, when this slide cycles, you will see the trigger move backwards. All right. So now you can see it's in a completely different position. So now when I reset, it's back there. Okay, so there's the wall again. It's kind of like a wall, it's more like a bump. So break, reset, trigger, it's further back now, and then forward we come. So it is, there's an aspect of this that's more performance because once again, let's do this one. So there's the pre-travel. It's just about the same pre-travel. There's the brake. And you can see I'm gonna rack this one too and it's probably gonna move further back. And then here's the reset on this. So you see it's just about the same action. So we're going to, you know, like I said, if you've watched my videos, you know we break things down in between you know, pre-travel, brake, brake travel, reset, reset speed, length and feel, and all that kind of stuff. So what I'm seeing from this is, and it's just the same thing I said about the Timney. It has a very good brake. The brake is very good. We're gonna, you know, you can't get a Glock trigger out of the box to brake at, and it breaking straight up at three pounds every time. That's three pounds. It's consistent, I'll give it that. It's very consistent three pounds, and that's with an OEM spring, three pounds. See, every time, like right on the line. So it is a very consistent trigger. Um, now, let's, <laughs> let's get into the nitty gritty because, okay, so like I said, in my opinion, the performance part, if you're gonna call it that, is basically in the brake. You know what I mean? You, don't you agree? Yeah. Yeah. So it's got a nice brake feel, and I'm going to show you exactly why it's got a nice brake feel. And that's because it is, for all intents and purposes, turning the trigger into a one-stage trigger. So basically, you don't have the kick-up anymore that's determining the brake you have a crossbar. Everyone's gonna notice this design that has a Timney. It's that crossbar, and what that crossbar is doing is as the connector drives it back, it is pushing down the sear in the back. So if I push this back, you can see this little, maybe better, better to see it from this way. If I push this back, you can see it moving. See how it pushes it down? It's a dot connector that it's using. So that's why you have less of a wall because it's at like a 90, four degree angle or something like that but that's that's basically the mechanism you can see that so same thing with this if you look at the timney design this moving backwards is dropping down that sear is everyone following out can you basically yeah. see that wick yeah yeah so it's the same it's the same idea you know what i mean um yeah i mean this the they're 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 very <laughs> They're pretty close. But the thing that's different, the main difference in between this trigger and the Timney is the Timney uses the return spring right here in order to in order to reset the trigger to propel it forward. Because you no longer have the striker since the striker is being held statically back here. And uh, in case you guys haven't seen any of my other videos, you know, uh, the, the trigger is being held static in the back. Same thing with this unit. The trigger is being held static in the back by the actual unit. So you have a you have a completely cocked trigger. So the trigger is sitting like that. So you have a trigger that is cocked and ready to go. So with that and knowing the potential of having a completely cocked trigger, and I don't know if you can get this in the video, but if I do rack this back, you can see that trigger. Those of you guys that know what, what the inside of these look like, you have your light it's a back there all the way. 
That's what your trigger looks like when it breaks. So when I pull the trigger and it breaks, as you can see, it's loosed. Picked up, loosed. Picked up, statically held, break. All right, so that is. So with that, um, you need to have a very, I'm not gonna say sophisticated, but you really need to think about safety because, you know, even though the Timneys that I was dropping really high and stuff like that weren't failing, it's because I had to build up the drop shelf. Um, and so what they have done here is they have created, and you know what, guys, it's really, let me say this right now. Do not take this trigger apart unless you know what you're doing, because it is very hard to, it's very, it's, it's a little more complicated to put back together than, than most people think. I'm going to show you how to do it, but, um, you know, it took us a second to figure it out, the, the easiest way to do it. Um, so what they have here, and I hope you can get this, Wick, there is a little hook right there that is holding, you got that? Yeah. That is holding the, the trigger bar in there, the cross bar, the trigger bar. So this thing, no matter how much it's you see it can't it can't go anywhere it's got it locked in you can see it even through there because there's no drop shelf mechanism like in the normal uh glocks i'll take this i'll take this one apart so you guys can see but basically you know when you pull this thing out this thing this is this is the makeup but this part i'm gonna show you how to take it apart so basically you have a the, we'll call it the receiver. So this receiver is captured. It's captured by the, there's your pin. And that's not a pin right there. That's basically your ejector. So when you pull the ejector, that leaves that area open. And then you go in with a punch. You can push this right out. Okay. So now I got that out. That frees this unit. And this is the part that I'm talking about, the hook right there. So basically this hook is what holds that trigger bar in place. And wait a minute, let me get this out of the way. Hey, you wanted 50 of these, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we are shooting a video over here. Oh, I'm so sorry. I thought you were done. Push it, as you can see, it's very, uh, 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 uh. All right, anyway, there we go. So now it's, now it's held together. That's basically the mechanism that keeps that trigger from that. That would be what's replacing the drop shelf. All right, right there. So there, that thing is not going anywhere. All right, not the first time I've seen that design either. So, um, and then what happens back here, as you can see the return spring, what is making this trigger return instead of having it in the shoe is this spring right here, which is very similar to the, it's almost like the same setup they kind of use in their, in their, um, you know, Gen 5 housing, which is, you know, that setup, but it's, it's reversed. So instead of it compressing when you're pulling back, this one's compressing like that. See how it compresses and then it releases forward. Wow, this is rough, rough to get this. So, so trigger pushes it back and then it, that's, see, the, that's the return, return right there. Break, return, break, return, break, return. And you can see this is interesting because it's all it's all moving right here, which is pretty cool that that is got that ability to pivot. It's angled right here. So when the striker does come back, I know that was an issue with Timney's that they were snapping the striker a little bit with the, the half moon style, the bottom striker here when it comes back, when, the, when it comes back to pick the striker up. You know what I mean? That's a nice angle right there for it to not worry about getting hung up on. Also with this one, you can see they, you know, whereas the Timney has, um, you know, this bar very flat, it's just a flat bar. They've taken it to the next level and they have pressed the bar down. So you see that, see that indentation in the bar and how thin it is. That completely gets the crossbar out of the way for any striker that is moving over top of it. Okay. Now, to put this back together, that's the housing. The housing is different, you know, because it doesn't need the normal drop shelves. Like here's a here's a standard Gen 5 housing. 
You can see the 45 down to the drop. That doesn't exist on this. On the other side, you can see the 45 down to the drop right there. That doesn't, that's not on there. It's not necessary because of the hook on there. Um, you know, for all intents and purposes, you could impregnate this with a, impregnate it. Uh, you could tap and like what I do with my setup, like you could tap and drill that in there. And you know you could use that as a as a stop. That's that's going to keep that from coming the whole way back. Um, that's one option of 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 dealing with that because I, like I said, that's a big inefficiency. When you're putting this back together, it's going to go back in the exact same way. You're going to drop it down in like so. Okay. This pin has it's like a shoulder on there, so the so the shoulder side has to go through first. And it's go right back through the hole that it came out of, and it's gonna, you know, you gotta, you gotta fuss with it a little bit, but that's gonna basically go right back into there, and you have to get it pushed through back into this where it rests, you know, it rests in that hole. So it can be a little, you gotta kind of finagle it a little bit, because you won't be able to get short. That's why I said it's a little it's a little bit tricky you're not you don't want to take this trigger apart unless you have to um which i can't see why you would have to unless you're me okay so now we got it back in but like i said it's almost like a you know when you're putting when you're putting together your you know 43 and you got to kind of wiggle the, the the slide lock i mean the slide stop the slide catch same sort of thing so then once you have that in this is what's going to capture it it's going to go right back in there again like that, so now you can see that pin is captured inside that unit on the one side by the polymer of the shoulder set screw and the and the neck on that collar on that, and on the other side there. So this is the this is the hard part. So when you're when you're putting this back in, you're going to want to pull that down like that. It has to be pulled down in order to get that back in easily. I don't know. Maybe if we remember how there was the square on the back of this wick. Maybe if we you know. SR that or QR that or whatever it'll give us directions on how to do that. I don't know. Um, I doubt it though because Glock doesn't like you know people taking their stuff apart and you know you got to go to armor's course for that. So just like that, you're going to drop this in and get it forward, and then that's why it has to be underneath. The best bet, the best thing I've found it to use is like this little this little owl right here because I can just literally grab that kind of opening and just push it back and slide it up on so you're back in there but like i said do not do that unless you <laughs> unless you want a pain in the butt you know what i mean because it really is a pain in the butt so you know what like it i i, I have a hard time speaking about this because you know, if this if this was brand new and I never saw, you know, it had the Timney not come out, I would be like, oh my God, this is insane. You know what I mean? Because it is. It's a very and and I I can definitely say they've 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 done some really interesting things to this to build it, uh, and I'm sure they've tested the living crap out of it. You know, there's not a you know I I I'm I'm not a big fan of that little polymer, you know, uh, leg that goes in there that's you know that's holding this together but then again that's the exact same setup they have on the gen 5s it's just a little bit different you know um like i said we do have you know good engagement we do have uh you know just from the test there is fire pin push through you know it's coming through the breech face so you know some of the problems that with people have had with the timneys is like you know they have the new trigger bar with the timneys that have that has the you know the dimple on there so it tracks over the firing pin safety better so it disengages it that way as it as the firing pin tip comes through the breech face it's not nicking the safety or anything like that and that's usually what the problem is with the light strikes with the with those so you know it's you know, you have to make your own decision with this, if, if it's worth it or not. I don't know what the MSRP on it is. Um, I'm not going to say it's super duper duper innovative because it's kind of standing on some someone's shoulders, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, the, the brake is not, like I said, the action, reset, action. So I know one thing, we haven't 
we haven't tried it yet, but just because most of this stuff is, is like, you know, Legos, we're going to, uh, and I don't want to, you know what, let's try it. We'll try it live. I'm going to, um, pop this pin out. Let's see how fast I can do this, man. I'm going to get rid of the trigger shoe. Dang, bro. Yeah, so it does, it's just a bigger shoe. So it look, does look like it's in a different position, but yeah, see Wick how normally if, 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 if Brandon, if you would knock this out, you would be hitting right there, wouldn't you? Yeah. When you knock the, would knock the shoe out. So this might be in a completely, let me grab that. You know, so all I did was, you've seen this video before, I created a blind hole, basically go back through. That's how we get to, oop, lost a pin. So let's uh, grab a three screw of X. All right, put this bad boy on here. I'm also gonna put the, uh, you know, this, this three screw, we call it three screw because it has three set screws. So basically they're, they're for special builds, but that's going to go back in there. I'm not going to, I'm not only going to put it to where it actually starts to move the bar because that's, what's going to, that's, what's going to mess with the reset. So, um, why don't you film Chelsea for a while? Cause I want to do this without getting. Really oh, come on. Really? Yeah. Let them know. Wait, let them know that I'm just doing this because I don't want to be taking a gun apart. Yeah, so per uh, the ridiculous rules that are put forth by the YouTube overlords, I am not allowed to show you uh, the part where he takes apart a Glock. You know, the thing that if you're watching this video right now, you definitely know how to do um, because it's the easiest freaking thing on the planet. So the amount of time that it has taken me to walk over there, show you uh, Larry putting some stuff together. Uh, Johnny has taken the gun completely apart and reinstalled my Vex shoe. So it looks pretty, looks pretty good. You know what I mean? Like this is sitting much further back, which you want with a performance trigger. And now we're going to, uh, like I said, the other one was, you know, right about there. Hopefully you guys can use your, you know, wonder or just rewind it if you don't want to remember. So let's see if it, we can get it to break. Yeah, we can look at that. And let's see if there, how the reset is same thing. So now we're going to film something else while I dial it in. Cause I have to take the entire gun back apart. Gun hub. Well, I'm pretty psyched now that we know that Vex works in there. So guys, if you get the clock performance trigger, <laughs> Make or sure. if you need uh, any framework done, you know. Yeah, we got a great framework guy here. It's me. I do it. I do it all. Larry. There's always a good woman behind a man, isn't that the same? Your flash on. That's so bright. It's because you were lying. You have your... What? And it's back together. I still got room to move, so I gotta dial it in again. And again, all right, let's go see what James is doing. I could hit pause, but we're just gonna go do this. What? This is why you're fat. Why? Look, he's standing there, well, he's fat too, but you're more fat. You're a little bit fat. I won't be talking that fucking pudge you got going on. <laughs> How much do you weigh? Uh -huh. 260. 330. Oh. I'm down 30 pounds, so. Two, Good job. 260. <laughs> I'm 190. Are you not done no, yet? No, I got to, I'm gonna, we got to have a discussion about oh, how Oh no, now I got to back it out a little. You got to, and back again. I got to back it out. Went too far. I wish I didn't have to take this out every time. Stupid YouTube rules not allowing us to show the actual taking apart or putting together. So if I pick a gun up, you'll get like in trouble. No, we can't have we can't take one apart. Like you can't show taking apart or working on anymore. So why he's doing that? That's retarded. I mean, that's the reason you go to YouTube. Well, now to we're demonetized how... because you said the R word. What are you talking about?
You're still not done? Yeah, it's a little finicky. Back again. Brand new design. He said retard. <laughs> I can say Andrew's favorite word. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> We're... What? Jake is um, going to be missed. He would have been in yeah, this video, but he had to leave to go home. So, Jake, where'd you go? stay where I had it. All right, so I'm just gonna film your face as you yell at this uh, performance thing and just keep it off screen. I don't know how the heck that happened. You know what we need? Use my test pins. When we're recording, we need like an on-air thing or something so you guys can have that on so then when somebody has to come up and ask a question, they don't just like ask it in the middle of the video. All right, this might be it, let's see. You know what? This is I I, pr I probably could dial it in a little bit better, but like you can see, when I when the trigger breaks now, it doesn't go back any further. It stays right there, just like the Vex Timney does. So basically, you know, it's the same exact thing. So the reset is sub substantially shorter than the performance trigger, but it could be better. You know, the but like I said, I only have so much time here. I got to dial it in more. But as far as the, as far as your brake position and your pre travel, it's you know, it takes all of it out. As far as the brake weight, let's see if it's breaking still at, you know, right around three pounds. I put that pin in mine in there, so. Yep, same thing, three pounds. So, um, I'm not gonna say 100% to put my VEX in here yet. Um, yeah, I will. I mean, there's, not, there's nothing that's gonna, I'll do some further testing with it, but as far as, um, as far as the mechanics of it go, everything that I'm looking at is is spot on, you know. And that's the first chance I got to throw one of my vexes on there. Um, so you'll probably see very shortly on the website Glock Performance Performance Upgrade Vex, like the Timmy <laughs> Upgrade Vex. So um, yeah, with that said, I, like uh, I mean, I don't know what the MSRP is. I know every Glock person out there and their brother is going to have to get this just because, hey, you got to, and I get it. I mean, with a good, and I'm probably going to, you know, you know me, I'm probably going to have a bunch of these and I'll, I'll, I'll hot rod them up and see what I can do with them and, you know, take a lot of the pre-travel out. And, you know, the only thing with me is I'm afraid to take some of the pre, uh, let's see where this is sitting in battery. Okay, so, so as you can see now, we're, we're in battery right there and the hook is still hooked. That was one of the most important things. So that hook, that hook that we were talking about, even with that much pre-travel taken out of the system, it's still 100% hooked on there. So it is, it is drop safe as well, which is nice. Yeah, that fit in there pretty good. You know, what time, what's the time right now? 28 minutes. 28 minutes. Okay. So, um, you know, if you guys have any questions or, you know, want to leave some comments or something like that, let me know. Hopefully this was, you know, I think I covered everything. You know, hopefully this was informative to, towards Follow you. him on Rumble. Yeah, Rumble, Patreon, all that stuff. But uh, I, I, that's 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 as much as I can show you on this so far. I just wanted to jump. I just want to get out there just like I did with the Timney and, you know, break the Internet. You know, be the first one to put this out. I don't know if anyone else has put out a video. But like I said, um, I, I'm sure it's not as in-depth as, as this. I'm sure it's going to be just like a tabletop thing. So, um, yeah, that's about it. It's great to be back on YouTube. Hopefully there's no issue with this video and we can move forward. Um, that's some Wix framework right there. Yep. All right, guys. Well, listen, you know what I'm going to say? Trigger control is control.